Number 10. Katy Perry Collects Hair The singer was once asked during an interview a very simple and cute question of what's in your purse? And fans perhaps hoped that she would respond with a bottle of Killer Queen or a cupcake crumb. But Katy Perry answered, eh, it's just a big empty bag. But she went on to describe what used to be in the purse. She claimed that while in attendance at her first Grammy Awards ceremony, she got to share a dressing room with Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift. Now with all that excitement, you'd think she'd ask for a picture or something, right? Now, she asked them for a lock of each of their hairs, which Katy found, quote, totally awesome. Well, her definition of the word awesome must be very different from ours, because this sounds just creepy as all heck. She then elaborated that she would tie little bows to each of them and put them in her purse. Now, this sounds so made up, how could it be true? Well, Miley and Taylor actually backed up this story online, and Perry claims to this day that Miley Cyrus is both the most famous person in her purse and in her contacts. Oh, hey, Katie, I think you dropped something. Number 9. Ellen Mistreats Employees In her first on-air appearance since announcing the end of her eponymous daytime talk show, Ellen DeGeneres called the press cycle around allegations of toxicity at her workplace orchestrated and misogynistic. The announcement that her show would be cancelled came after months of receiving negative press following a BuzzFeed article reporting former employees alleging that the environment was racially insensitive, filled with harassment and bullying. Ellen maintained in interviews that these allegations were not the reason that that she would be leaving the show, simply claiming that the program was no longer challenging for her. While the BuzzFeed report did not allege toxic behavior by Ellen herself, several former staff members claimed that the whole be kind motto she had was not genuine at all, which was reflected in a Twitter thread published by comedian Kevin T. Porter. He asked people to send in their horror stories about the host's rudeness over the years, and he received over 2,000 replies. Warner Brothers opened an investigation and concluded that there were some flaws in the day-to-day management at the studio. Following this, Ellen appeared on the 18th season premiere of her show in 2020 and made an on-air apology to viewers, claiming responsibility later stating that there was no way she could know the true nature of the work environment due to the 255 employees that worked for her across multiple buildings. Hey, ever heard of like a complaint box? Number 8. Prince Charles' Affair He's now the King of England, but he's not always played by the rules. You see, in 1981, Prince Charles at the time married Lady Diana, who was 20 years old at the time, leaving a 13-year age gap between them. Behind closed doors, it was speculated that Charles was never in love with Diana in the first place, and it was later proven to be true. While on the outside things seemed pleasant, behind the scenes, Charles was secretly meeting up and having an affair with his ex-girlfriend, Camilla Bowles. The alleged relationship was written about in the 1992 Diana Her True Storybook, but in 1994, Charles confirmed the allegations in a documentary, because that's a great place to do that. The couple filed for a divorce in 1996, and Diana died one year later. While the now king made it clear that he had no plans to remarry, he ended up getting remarried in 2005 to, oh, hey, look, it's Camilla Bowles. Shocking. Number 7. Jonathan Majors charges. Jonathan Majors may be familiar to those of you who are fans of the MCU as Kang the Conqueror, the newest big bad addition to the never ending roster of villains in Marvel's rogue gallery. Unfortunately, it looks like he may end up getting the CGI eraser treatment due to an incident in March of this year. Majors was arrested on misdemeanor charges of of and her following a domestic dispute with his girlfriend. These charges, however, would only be the first domino to fall, as rumors began circulating about similar instances in the past, with many people in both the Yale community, where he went to school, and the New York theater scene, where he studied and practiced performing, claiming Majors was well known for being emotionally violent and professionally abusive but never physically violent. While Majors is currently in a battle to prove his innocence, claiming the situation to have been blown out of proportions, a series of texts uncovered by his lawyer seemingly proved that there was some merit to the incident. They showed Majors his girlfriend had passed out during the incident and as such had to be hospitalized, where she was reported to have several bruises and scratch marks throughout her entire body. This meant that the charges would stick, and Majors is definitely on his way to the bottomless pit of cancelled celebrities. Number Six, Caitlyn Jenner's transition. Now, this one isn't disturbing because of Caitlyn, it's because of how many people felt that her business needed to be a part of their lives. Let people live, you jerks. 
Rumors had been circulating of Caitlyn's transition since the early 1970s. The former Olympian had publicly denied these rumors for years, with many family members and friends even backing her story up time and time again. But in 2015, the rumors had begun surfacing again due to Jenner being spotted leaving a doctor's office by a tabloid journalist, supposedly after just receiving estrogen treatments. Jenner had also recently undergone reconstructive surgery, which seemed to only add more fuel to the fire. The photo taken and the speculation began to go viral despite Jenner not being fully out at the time. But a few months later following these events, she came out as transgender on a highly publicized interview for Diane Sawyer. In the interview, Jenner expressed the gender identity struggles that she has faced through her entire life, having to hide her true self in order to maintain some macho sporty persona and for fear of not being accepted. Even revealing that her first wife Christy Scott was the first to really understand her struggles and despite being divorced in 19. She's publicly expressed her well wishes towards Caitlyn and how proud she is for being herself. You go, girl! Number 5. Kevin Spacey For a long time, Kevin Spacey was well known in the Hollywood community as a quality actor with a steady career and no signs of that stopping. That was until October 2017, when a BuzzFeed article, once again, had been published alleging that Spacey had made unwanted advances towards a then 14 Anthony Rapp. Spacey was quick to deny the speculation, claiming it to be another Hollywood scandal to fill scream time, but since the release of that article, 30 more people have come forward with their own allegations against Spacey, ranging from harassment to attempted assault. Spacey pulled back fake apologizing for what he says must have been some drunken behavior to rap, and even attempted to shift the subject by coming out of the closet. But the truth had already been set free, and becoming a part of the now famous Me Too movement, Spacey was dropped from all projects he was involved in, and has been on Hollywood's blacklist ever since where he rightfully belongs. Number 4. Tiger Woods Infidelity Since 1999, the famous golfer had not gone a single year without winning at least one golf major championship. In fact, between the years of 1997 and 2008, he had won 14 majors. He was married to a model, had a beautiful home, and pockets full of cash. What more could you want? Apparently for Tiger, he wanted someone that wasn't his wife. In late November 2009, Tiger was seen by neighbors being chased out of his home by his wife, Ellen Nordegren, with a golf club, before peeling out of his driveway in his Escalade and crashing into a fire hydrant and then a tree. He lied unconscious on the street for 6 minutes before coming to, but by that time, it was already too late. News coverage began speculating that there must have been some case of infidelity fidelity with Tiger and his wife. And while rumors had speculated that Tiger had a mistress on the side, it turned out that this guy had a lady in every course, so to speak. He admitted on air to the misdoings and lost his endorsements with Nike, Gatorade, Gillette, and Accenture, before announcing his retirement entirely from golf. Woods reportedly confessed to sleeping with 120 women outside of his marriage, but it wasn't until April 2010 when Ellen decided to split up with Woods for good after she discovered that one of the those mistresses was the next door neighbor's daughter who was in college at the time. Go Cappanoo! Number 3. John Lennon's Investigation Lead guitarist of the Beatles and an incredible musician in his own right, John Lennon was always very open on his political views. He was anti-war, anti-establishment, and anti-government, proven by his counterculture-esque songs like Give Peace a Chance. This marked Lennon as a national threat, and his theory on what that meant was a little fishy. Many times in interviews, he would claim that he was under surveillance 24-7 and that he was seeing the same cars driving near his residence essentially every day. Now, While at first this was taken as the ramblings of a hippie under the influence of mind-altering narcotics, this theory was proven to be true in 1972 when the Immigration and Naturalization Service tried to deport him after the FBI had confirmed that Lenin was under investigation for over a year. He was able to fight back and stay in the country to continue his anti-war agenda. See? Hippies aren't always crazy. Okay? Number 2. Arnold has a secret kid. Action movie star and former California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger made headlines in 2011 with the revelation that an old rumor was in fact true. In 1996, Arnold was married to Maria Shriver, a member of the Kennedy family, and they were prepping to welcome their new son Christopher into the world. Arnie didn't prep by building cribs or baby proofing the outlets though, instead he chose to have an affair with his longtime housekeeper Mildred Baina. Around the same time Christopher was born, so was his illegitimate son, Joseph. 
Rumors began to rise after his wife noticed the strange and sudden absence of the housekeeper and wondered if there may have been a more sinister reason for her departure. It was later revealed in 2011 though that Arnold decided to address the rumors and claim Joseph as his own. It turns out that Arnold had given Mildred a large severance package so that she could properly raise their son, leaving on what they called good terms. Eventually though, after many years of trying and lots of paperwork, Maria and Arnold were finally divorced and he is now able to spend more time as a father. Mildred is a chef and little Joseph is now all grown up and following in his father's footsteps as both a model and in the movie industry. And number one. Donald Trump's criminal activities. In 2006, Donald Trump was known solely as a wealthy real estate mogul with a hit reality show called The Apprentice. He had recently been married to Melania Trump and he had a newly born four month old baby. However, reports leaked that Trump was in the midst of an affair with adult film star Stormy Daniels after she filed a civil suit claiming that the contract he made her sign to keep quiet was invalid. Daniels claimed that herself and Trump had shared a very intimate relationship for roughly a year during his marriage to Melania. These weren't the first allegations of an affair, as Trump has been back and forth in the media since the 1970s, being accused by 26 women of harassment or misconduct. While these rumors never held any merit at first, the truth was finally set free. After being the most chaotic president in recent history, it was announced in March that Trump was being arrested on 34 separate violations of a New York law against falsifying business documents to conceal another crime. Basically, over the years, he was essentially taking company money and using it to pay off anyone who might have been a threat to him both personally and politically. Well hey, thanks for the free money Donnie, we'll see you never. Number 10, Jennifer Aniston nearly quit. Jennifer was the last to sign for the final 10th season of Friends and she very nearly didn't return at all. Part of this was down to her busy career because at this point she was definitely one of the most famous of the Friends cast. She had several movies on the slate. She later revealed that she was debating not coming back because she had a couple of issues that she was dealing with at the time. Jennifer said that she wanted to end the show when people still loved them and they were on a high. She also questioned herself about how long she really wanted to play Rachel. Jennifer obviously eventually agreed to the final season, but she is the reason why it's the shortest season, because she only agreed to return if it was cut short. Luckily for everyone, she decided to stay and felt bittersweet about the final season, and in the end she found herself wishing that it could have continued on. Most of the cast members' careers have crashed and burned after Friends ended, but Jennifer Aniston was a rare exception. She went on to star in several Hollywood blockbusters like Bruce Almighty, Breakup, Marley and Me, Just Go With It, Horrible Bosses, and Where the Millers, all of which were very successful at the box office. Number 9, Matthew struggled with substances. As we know, Matthew Perry's sudden death has completely shocked the world. The beloved actor was found at his home after an apparent drowning. He was only 54 years old and his passing was an absolute tragedy. Many of the friends cast struggled to deal with their newfound fame and for Matthew this led to problems with addiction, which he has been extremely open about in his memoir. Although he said that he was never drunk on set, he did admit to being painfully hungover to the point that everyone became aware of. After more than one stint in rehab, he managed to get clean and then he became very passionate about helping other people who were struggling. Just last year, he revealed that he and Jennifer Aniston had stayed in each other's lives and they remained in close contact. He said that it was actually Jennifer who confronted him first about his addictions during the filming of the show. Apparently she approached him during a break and told him, we know you're drinking. And looking back on that moment, Matthew thought that it was very scary because in his own mind, he thought he was doing a perfectly fine job of hiding his habits from his co-stars. But at a certain point, they all knew that he was in trouble and they did their best to support him. Number eight, Lisa Kudrow sued the show. Lisa Kudrow's manager, Scott Howard, sued her in 2008, year after she ended her contract with him and four years after Friends ended. Howard claimed that Lisa owed him residuals for the reruns of Friends and other projects that she had worked on while under his management, to the tune of 10% of everything that she got. He stopped paying him when the contract was dissolved and argued that the 10% was only payable when he was managing her. Eventually, he won the case in 2014 and the judge awarded him $1.6 million. Of course, for someone who earned $1 million per episode for the final seasons of Friends, that figure wouldn't have put too much of a dent in her bank account. In a statement, Elisa's attorney said, the jury's verdict is merely one step in the legal process. This case will ultimately be resolved at the appellate level. Mrs. Kudrow has faith in the judicial system and she believes that the eventual outcome of this contractual dispute will be in her favor. In a statement of his own, Scott Howard's attorney said, what generally happens now with unsophisticated actors 
psychiatrist clients is they overpay for filing a frivolous appeal that has no chance for success. So this legal battle got extremely messy in the end and it must have been embarrassing to be a part of. Number seven, David Schwimmer went into hiding. As we know, David struggled with the fame that came from being such a huge hit at such a young age. Of the main six actors in Friends, he's the one who has shied away from the limelight the most. Although he continued to work after the show ended, he spent many years preferring to do voice work, directing, producing, and has been candid about struggling to find a way to continue acting as he's such a huge celebrity. He said, it was pretty jarring and it messed with my relationships with other people in a way that took years. I need to kind of adjust to and become comfortable. It made me want to hide under a baseball cap and not be seen. So I was trying to figure out how do I be an actor in this new world, in this new situation. Friends was such a huge hit from the moment it premiered that it didn't just bring fame to its stars, it brought a mega level of fame that is hard to understand. For David, it was just too hard to deal with. So much so that it didn't just affect him, but his relationships and other people as well. He was also an actor who, as a part of his craft, liked to be anonymous and observe people out in the world. But of course, he simply could not do that anymore once he reached that certain level of success. Number six, Matt LeBlanc was arrested. Before he became famous, Matt was already getting used to that crazy party lifestyle that most people associate with being a celebrity. After Friends was finished, he admitted that he was arrested for drunk driving twice. He said, when I was young and stupid, I wasn't driving fast, just crooked. This came up when he was cast as one of the hosts of the new Top Gear, and fans were not sure whether a history of reckless driving was a good thing when it came to presenting a show about cars. Matt dismissed the incidents as the product of his age, although he has said that he's grateful the press never got a hold of his mugshots. While his drunk driving record happened before fame and fortune came to him, he also got into some pretty dark times when it came to dealing with his newfound fame. He nearly had a nervous breakdown due to the intensity of working on Friends, especially when the show came to an end. Speaking about that time, Matt said that for years and years, he barely left the house because he was so burnt out. He wanted not to have a schedule and not to have to be anywhere. Luckily, he was in a position financially to be able to do that with all of his savings, but of course his agent was not too happy. Matt said that was a very dark time for him and it even led to a nervous breakdown. Number five, Jennifer Aniston's wedding. While not every cast is close off screen, the cast of Friends was known for being friends in real life, as well as having a huddle before each episode started filming and negotiating their salaries as a team. The cast were often photographed out and about together, and they talked in interviews about how close they remained, even after the filming ended. I mean, Jennifer Aniston is even godmother to Courtney Cox's daughter. But in 2015, when she married Justin Theroux, she didn't invite any of her male co-stars to the ceremony. It was a small wedding with only 70 guests, but it did include Courtney and Lisa. Matthew Perry said that he was surprised he wasn't invited, but he was still very happy for the couple, despite the awkwardness of rejection. Hopefully though, he didn't take too much offense, considering that Jennifer didn't even invite her own mother to her wedding with Brad Pitt in 2000. In an interview with Ellen in 2018, she opened up about why she went years without talking to her mother, Nancy Dow, saying, quote, she was critical, she was very critical of me. Because she was a model, she was beautiful, magnificent, I wasn't, I never was. She added that her mother was very unforgiving and would often hold long grudges. They ended up reuniting several years later, and by Jen's marriage to her second husband, Justin, in 2015, they were finally on speaking terms. But the funny thing is, Nancy still wasn't invited to that wedding either. Number four, David's neighbors hated him. Even stars have feuds with their neighbors and David Schwimmer is no exception. In 2010, the star bought a property in the East Village, townhouse from 1852, and of course the land that it stood on. But he decided that rather than renovate it to keep up the facade, he would just tear the whole thing down and start fresh. It's something that a lot of property developers are known for doing, but it's never really a popular decision. As a result, an anonymous neighbor left a message for him that was too big to ignore. For some reason, they decided it would really upset him if they spray painted in huge letters on the construction site fence. They wrote the words, Ross is not cool, which is both hilarious and kind of genius because it actually echoed a storyline from the show where Ross moves into a new building and becomes enemies with the neighbors by not chipping in for the maintenance man's retirement gift, which kind of goes to show you that life really does imitate art. There's no saying how David reacted to this, but you can imagine that he wouldn't be too pleased that the construction site had graffiti. Matthew's extreme 
extreme anxiety. Matthew Perry admitted two years ago that he suffered from anxiety, which often came when he was trying to be as funny as he could in front of the live studio audience while they were filming Friends. The admission came up during the HBO Max Friends reunion with Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, and David Schwimmer. Matthew said that trying to be great made him extremely nervous, and his co-stars at the reunion said they never had any idea that he was suffering on set because he always delivered such a fabulous performance while being seemingly at ease. He said, to me, I felt like I was going to die if they didn't laugh. And it's not healthy for sure, but I would sometimes say a line and they wouldn't laugh and I would sweat and just go into convulsions if I didn't get the laugh I was supposed to get. I would freak out. His co-star Lisa was shocked to hear that. She said that Matthew was always such a cool cucumber and he was one of the best on set, always delivering a line well as he played Chandler. Even though he never said anything to his co-stars back then, he felt this way every single night. And as we know now, his time on Friends was significantly impacted by his addiction. Memoir controversy. One surprise takeaway from Matthew Perry's autobiography was his apparent feelings towards Keanu Reeves after he repeatedly questioned why other actors die while Keanu is still alive. Quote, why is it that original thinkers like River Phoenix and Heath Ledger die, but Keanu Reeves still walks among us? Upon learning that another former co-star Chris Farley had died, he wrote, I punched a hole through Jennifer Aniston's dressing room wall when I found out. And in the next line, he wrote, Keanu Reeves still walks among us. Matthew would later apologize for the comments and then release a statement saying, I'm actually a big fan of Keanu. I just chose a random name, my mistake. I apologize. But that wasn't it at all. There was also a lot of other interesting admissions in his memoir. Another thing he also revealed is that he asked out Jennifer Aniston before filming Friends. He said that the two of them were the only friend stars who knew each other before the show, having met three years before through mutual acquaintances. In one part of the book, he wrote, I was immediately taken by her. How could I not be? And liked her. I got the sense that she was intrigued too, and maybe it was going to be something. Safe to say that fans were more than shocked by that revelation. And number one, everyone was scared of Matt LeBlanc. Now, Joey is far from a scary guy, but when Matt LeBlanc was first cast in the role, some of the other cast members were a little bit afraid of him. This fear was based off of what they knew about Matt himself. The fact that he was raised by a mechanic and had done a stick as a male model as well and had done a stint and had done a stint as a male model as well as what they knew about the character of Joey who is known as a very forward womanizer. Jennifer Aniston in particular remembers being intimidated before she met him herself. She said I was scared of that type of guy. He thinks it's very funny now and actually he can sit down and comfort me just like Courtney or Lisa could. So it's a good thing that Matt turned out to be just as much of a sweetheart as Joey was despite a slightly rocky start. In at number 10 Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis is the most recent cast member to be fired from the show, but his case is even more unique because he was fired from the show before he even made his first appearance. Gillis was said to appear on the 2019 season of the show, but after he was announced, racist tweets mocking Asian people resurfaced, as well as a video. An SNL spokesperson said in a statement on behalf of the show, quote, After talking with Shane Gillis, we have decided that he will not be joining SNL, with the show adding that they were not aware of these statements before they decided to hire him. In a statement made after the decision, Gillis said, quote, I respect the decision they made. I'm honestly grateful for the opportunity. I was always a mad TV guy anyway. In at number 9, Adam Sandler. Yes, that's right. One of the most successful comedians ever, Adam Sandler, was fired from SNL. Sandler was fired in 1995 when he was 28 after being on the show for five years. Reflecting on the firing, he said on The Howard Stern Show, quote, At the time, I was hurt because I didn't know what else I was going to do. He added, quote, Yes, we were fired. We kind of quit at the same time as being fired. It was the end of the run for us. The fact that me and him got fired, who knows? We were on it for a few years, had a run, and everything happens for a reason. We kind of understood because we did our thing. It hurt a lot at the time because we were young and didn't know what we were doing, but it all worked out. And the we here speaking of is Chris Farley. But he seemed to be a good sport about things, and when he hosted SNL in 2019, he sang an entire song about how he was fired. In at number 8, Jenny Slate. When actress Jenny Slate was cast on SNL, she thought she would be entering the wild, wild west but was shocked to learn just how restrained the cast members actually were, because it is network TV after all. Slate was fired after she broke the golden rule of live TV, no swearing. In 2009, during her very first sketch, she dropped the F-bomb. She said that immediately after, she understood what a big deal that it was. Saying in an interview later, quote, it felt like an explosion when I actually said the F-word on live TV during my very first sketch. 
After it happened, Lauren Michaels wanted to make sure I was okay because he knew I was scared. I had never been exposed so publicly. The aftermath was hard. People tweeted out that I was ugly and not funny, and it really stung. She even said that she never rewatched the clip of her swearing because she couldn't bear that humiliation. However, she did confirm later that the F bomb was not actually the reason that she was fired, she just simply didn't belong there. In at number seven, Chris Rock. The story of why Chris Rock was fired is a great reminder that you should never talk about wanting to leave your job. Chris Rock became a cast member in 1990 and remained on the show for three seasons. But in 1993, he was let go from the show because he expressed interest in joining another sketch show called In Living Color. But that gig didn't work out. And In Living Color was taken off the air only three weeks after he joined. In 2019, Rock returned to SNL to joke about his firing in a song with Adam Sandler, where he said in part, quote, I was fired by NBC, I went on In Living Color, three weeks later they took it off TV. But of course, it all worked out and he became an incredibly successful actor. And in number six, Laurie Metcalf. Academy Award nominated actress Laurie Metcalf was cast on SNL in 1981. However, her debut performance on the show was her last. After her first episode, the show immediately went on hiatus for a writer's strike. And when the show returned, she wasn't asked back. She spoke about the experience in an interview with Vulture years later, explaining that she was only in the city for one week and for one of the sketches, she was sent out on the street with no idea what she was doing. Adding quote, when I see that, I realize I was very naive and brave about it in a way. She has gone on to be nominated for an Academy Award and 11 Emmys, winning three. So I'm sure she's not bitter about it now. Halfway at number five, Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman joined SNL in 1993 as a writer and cast member, but at the end of that season, she was fired from the show. To make things worse, she was fired by fax. Like they didn't even have the courtesy to give her a phone call. Silverman said her firing was part of a big cast shakeup, and she even understands the decision, saying, quote, by the way, I wrote not a single funny sketch, so that might have had something to do with it too. But she quickly made a name for herself outside of the show, and she's now famous for her brash stand-up comedy. And at number four, Robert Downey Jr. It's insane to ever think that Iron Man could get fired from a job, but he did. In 1985, Downey Jr. was hired at the age of 20 for the show's 11th season, but he only ended up lasting one year. Downey has never admitted to being fired, but did admit that he was quote, ill-suited to the show. Telling off camera in 2019, quote, I learned so much in that year about what I wasn't. I was not somebody who was going to come up with a catchphrase. I wasn't somebody who was going to do impressions. I was somebody who was very ill-suited for rapid fire sketch comedy. I was like, this seems really hard. And at number three, Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans was hired in 1985, but only lasted one season because he changed a sketch without getting it approved. The issue was that he changed a straight character into a very flamboyant gay character without telling producers. The result was that Lauren Michaels fired Wayans for insubordination, according to GQ. Wayne stole The Weekender in 2015, quote, I knew I was going to get fired for it. Lauren did the right thing. And if you're wondering why he would do something that he knew was going to get him fired, Wayne said he made the decision because he was angry. Adding, quote, they didn't let me do what I wanted to on SNL, which I came to learn was Lauren Michaels' way of protecting me from looking like I was trying to be the next Eddie Murphy. Later adding that the show would not let him do things that Eddie Murphy would do but he got frustrated and decided to make his own script. But thankfully that wasn't the end for Wayans. Instead he went on to star in the sketch comedy in Living Color for three seasons. In at number two, Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle is another actor who only lasted one season on the show. He was hired in 2004, a former US Marine at the time. He blamed the fact that he was the only new person in the all-star cast, telling the Daily Beast in 2019, quote, this is the first showbiz gig I ever got, so it's overwhelming to begin with. It's an unbelievable pace and pressure. I got to a point where I didn't even know what was funny anymore by the end of the season saying he was working alongside huge names like Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, so obviously he was the one that was gonna be getting the boot. Thankfully, his comedy career didn't end there. Riggle then went on to become a correspondent on The Daily Show and is now a commentator on Fox NFL Sunday. And finally, at number one, Michaela Watkins. Michaela Watkins joined the cast in 2008, but only lasted one season before Michaels let her go. Watkins told Entertainment Weekly after she was let go, quote, the only explanation I got from him, and he's not known to say things just to make people feel better, was that he felt deep down that I should have my own show. And I agreed. SNL was a dream come true for me. It was a fantastic year. I don't have any regrets. She told Decider in a more recent interview that she thought joining SNL would be, quote, her big break, and felt that it was going well. But at the end of the season, she was shocked when her contract was not renewed. 
adding quote, maybe I was delusional. I really wanted to go back. I would have been really happy if they'd had me for three seasons. I felt like that would have been a really nice time there, but they had me for one, and then they had me no more. But she added it was a humbling experience. Number 10. Emily Ratajkowski. Model Emily Ratajkowski had her podcast silently shut down by Sony Group the same week that the company sacked a significant portion of its podcast division. High Low with Emma Ratta premiered in early 2023 and released three episodes a week on topics about everything from politics, philosophy, feminism, TikTok, and of course, relationships. Though it was fairly popular among international listeners, it struggled to sell advertising because brands wanted to reach US consumers. The people in charge at Sony said that they were very confident that Emily would be able to sell her podcast on a new platform. At the moment, it seems that Sony's predictions were false as the show has yet to find a new home. The show was officially cancelled in September of this year and so far it's safe to say that there just hasn't been enough time between A and B for her to find a new home. For fans of Radikowski, they simply have to wait and see what happens. Considering the pull that this woman has and the fan base that does exist in the US, it won't be long before you're listening to High Love with Emma Ratatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
awesome. But for a few years, she was sitting cozy on the set of her very own talk show called I Love You America. The show was aimed to give Sarah an outlet to poke fun at current political and emotional landscapes of the country. She would also, from time to time, bring on some celebrity guests to discuss their pasts and share stories. There was a lot going on for Sarah, whether it was connecting with firemen in Texas over making accidents in their pants, to going on a blind date with a conservative lobbyist in DC. She was never holding back. The show was pretty well received among Sarah's fans, but the executives over at Hulu just didn't appreciate the content of the show. And apparently, big budget studios don't like it when you get political. Oh, weirdos. The show only lasted one season, spanning 21 episodes, and it was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Variety Sketch in 2018, before its untimely demise. So at least she went away with a nomination. Number six, Lily Singh. Lily got her start on YouTube in 2010, but quickly became a very successful woman both in film and on TV, being casted in projects like Bad Moms, Ice Age, and Dr. Cabby. In 2019, Lily was offered the chance to host her own late night talk show, A Little Late with Lily Singh. The show was meant to be a follow up to the popular show Last Call with Carson Daly. With Chrissy Teigen being offered the job at first, she turned down NBC who then offered the job to Lily. The moment that the show premiered, things started going downhill fast. Now while fans of Lily were tuning in and loving it, anyone else on the planet was annoyed, confused, and a little bit angry. The first episode has been summarized by thousands of reviews, like this is not me, as white men bad, Lily is by, end of show. That's it, that's the review. Her show received massive amounts of hate, quickly garnering a one star review out of 10, something that I actually haven't seen while researching a topic yet here, so that's kind of neat. The hate continued towards Lily for two more seasons, two whole seasons, before they announced that the show was being canceled by NBC. She simultaneously announced a deal with Netflix, setting herself to star in a new show, and I'm pretty sure that just premiered not that long ago. Lesson learned, no matter how controversial you are, there is always room at Netflix. Number 5. TJ Miller Before being accused of misconduct by several women and having his career cancelled entirely, Miller was on a hot streak starring in Silicon Valley and the Deadpool franchise. In 2017, he was given a green light to host an 8 episode talk series called the Gore Burger Show. But unlike normal talk shows, this was meant to act as both a talk show and a straight up TV series. Miller voiced a massive blue furry puppet thing named Gore Burger. The alien takes a Japanese talk show hostage and he learns what it means to be a true human from various celebrity guests including Tig Notaro, Larry King, Rob Corddry, and Reggie Watts. The show was created after the success of the short sketch series of the same name on the Funny or Die YouTube channel, which is also responsible for the Weird Al Yankovic movie. Thank you guys so much for that one. In fact, it ran for two seasons on YouTube before being picked up for Prime TV. The concept was neat and had clearly been working online, however the show was cancelled after only 8 episodes due to the lack of star power that they were able to land on the show. And not to mention it was on super late at night, I'm pretty sure I watched this at like 1 in the morning regularly. However, some say the show was cancelled due to the allegations that were brought against Miller as the cancellation announcement was only one one week after the news began making headlines. Whether it was the controversy, the lack of celebs, the late night spot, who knows, this is one talk show that may return with a new voice behind the monster. I'd kind of like to see that. Number 4, George Lopez. George Lopez was one of the most bankable men around and he kind of still is. His comedic talents and eccentric personality make him instantly entertaining, so much so that he was given his own sitcom in the 90s, but we're here to talk about his talk show, Lopez Tonight. The show first aired in November 2009 on TBS. They actually didn't feature all that many celebrity guests and mainly relied on audience interactions and George being a wild, energetic man. He did have some guests appear with Kobe Bryant and Ellen DeGeneres being the most notable. Fortunately though around the end of 2010 there was a massive feud between The Tonight Show and Conan O'Brien that caused him to quit the series and sign on with TBS to create his own show which meant that Lopez would be pushed from a prime time 11pm slot to like midnight which is a lot less exciting. This move caused a steep decline in ratings and as of August 2011 they decided to cancel his show entirely. The short lived show will be remember though as a good time as the decline only came from the time change. The show itself was very well received and I would not be surprised if a revival was ever in the works. Please make that happen. I love George Lopez. He was the only good part of Blue Beetle. Number 3 Chris Jenner. Simply titled 
Chris. The momager of the Kardashian clan starred in a six week test run of a talk show. Not only did it receive terrible reviews, but it was cancelled before it was even picked up. Frank Kitcha, senior VP and president of programming at Fox TVS, admitted that he knew by the time that the test ended, the show was just not going to work. He claimed that Chris was uninteresting. She was trying to capitalize on her name and not her ability to, you know, entertain people. When the cameras were on, she looked like a deer in headlights. She had trouble reading the prompters and the conversations that she would have with her guests almost always felt like she was trying to take some kind of a survey. Where are you from? What's your hobbies? Which one of these pictures is not a sailboat? Are you a robot? He praised her hard work, but ultimately the project was a flop from the start. In fact, the studio later received hate mail aimed towards Chris, claiming her show would have been one of the worst Kardashian moves ever made. Or maybe this next one would have been. Number two, Khloe Kardashian. The Kardashian clan have tried many tactics over the years to increase their never ending flow of cash. Big sister Chloe decided that she wanted to do something outside of keeping up with the Kardashians while still being her real authentic self. So an online media outlet called FYI greenlit a talk series starring Chloe and her celebrity guests indulging in adult beverages while being interviewed and called it cocktails with Chloe but with a K cause they're Kardashians. Get it? She essentially created an environment where she could get paid to drink all day and chat with her friends, which is exactly what the show became. Unable to secure A-list celebrities, she forced her family to appear on the show along with several of her reality star friends and her sisters even forced their friends to appear like Snoop Dogg and Chrissy Teigen. Chloe acted as the producer of the series and would regularly clash with basically everyone on staff about what direction things should go in. The drama combined with the behavior of Khloe Kardashian behind the scenes caused them to cancel the show, releasing only 14 episodes of the planned 23. And at number 1, Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada and her husband Will have made headlines in the news several times over the years, usually for something terrible like infidelity or face smacking or you know being separated for 7 years. But earlier this year it was announced that her Facebook talk show Red Table Talk was going to be cancelled following several years on Meta. The decision was made following the distribution company shift to no longer produce independent content, despite having a pretty solid slew of guests. The topics tended to drift into too much information territory, with her sit down with husband Will Smith being one of the more revealing episodes and it still turned out there was more to be told. The show featured Jada, her mother, Adrian Banfield Norris, and her daughter, Willow Smith, discussing various topics, with mom Jada being the main host when it came time to the heavy one on ones. Jada herself has been shaded in controversy over the past few years as more infidelity rumors seem to be brought up and oh look it was all true everything was true go read her book or go watch one of our 20 videos about Jada Pinkett Smith that woman is not okay. Her show was taken off of the internet and despite trying to find a new home somewhere else it's looking like that show will never see the light of day again. Thank the lord. At number 10, Kathy Griffin. A lot of people see Kathy Griffin as somewhat of an offensive person because her comedy style is very open open and can be a little crude. Because of this, she's been in her fair share of controversies, but one of her biggest scandals happened back in 2017 when she made headlines after she posted a graphic photo of her holding a replica of Donald Trump's head. When this photo was originally released, all hell broke loose online and in the news, and her career was severely damaged. Because of the backlash she suffered as a result of this post, she was reportedly blacklisted from Hollywood. CNN ended up cutting ties with her, resulting in her being fired from her job, co-hosting the network's annual New Year's Eve broadcast, and this whole scandal really just caused her to lose a lot of credibility in the industry. Originally, she apologized for her actions and said that she regretted posting it after seeing how so many people took offense to it, but she seemed to have gone back on that regret as she reposted the same infamous photo to her social media following the events of the US presidential election. Luckily, she can't get fired again for the same thing. At number 9, Holly Hunter. Imagine recording an entire film just for the studio to end up firing you and scrapping all of your work. Well, this is what happened to Holly Hunter back in 2005 when she was fired from the animated film Chicken Little. We all know the film as being centered around a little chicken who thinks the sky is falling, but we also know the main character as being a boy. 
Turns out that originally the character of Chicken Little was a girl and she was voiced by Holly Hunter. The actress had lent her voice to the film and recorded her lines of the entire film working on the movie for about 8 months. But sadly, after all that hard work, the studio decided to take the character in a different direction and made Chicken Little into a male character. Holly was subsequently fired and replaced by Zach Braff who re-recorded all the lines for the film and had his voice pitched up in post-production. I honestly think it would suck so much to have put in all that work for nothing, but at least Holly has an interesting story to tell even though it's pretty unfortunate. Before I carry on with the video, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far and also if you're interested in gameplay content, why not head on over to my gaming channel Viper Girl and check out what I've got going on over there. I upload every single day so there's always something new and entertaining to enjoy over there. At number 8, Edward Norton. Anyone who's a big fan of the MCU knows the ins and outs of every movie and every bit of behind the scenes trivia so those people already know about the drama surrounding the Hulk in the franchise. But for those who don't know, Mark Ruffalo wasn't always the big green guy and the role was originally played by another actor who got fired. Actor Edward Norton was the one who first took on the role in the 2008 movie The Incredible Hulk and though that movie was pretty successful, they fired him from the role and decided to recast the character for the 2012 movie The Avengers which is where Mark Ruffalo took on the role. Edward was reportedly fired from this role because of clashes on set. Some people have said that Edward would be very controlling on set and reports say that the one defining moment that really solidifies Marvel's decision to fire Norton came after he and some studio executives got into a pretty heated argument over their desire to add more action scenes to the film. That decision did not sit well with Norton because he wanted the film to be more dramatic, not action based and apparently he hulked out when he didn't get his way. Honestly, Mark's portrayal of the Hulk is so spot on that I couldn't imagine how the MCU would have gone on so successfully without him. At number 7, Gina Carano. One Hollywood star who was recently fired is Gina Carano and she was let go from Disney after a lot of drama caused the company to sever their ties with the actress. There were several reasons why they wanted to fire Gina. She had been facing backlash for many of her controversial tweets, some of which included messages like comparing being a Republican to being Jewish during World War II, making claims of voter fraud during the 2020 election, as well as making anti-mask posts. There were also reports that there was a lot of conflict between the actors and some company executives while she was working on The Mandalorian, which caused people to want to let her go. According to sources, Disney had been looking to cut ties with the actress for a while because of their conflict with her, so the social media scandal she was facing became the last straw for them and they ended up letting her go. Seems like her firing was a long time coming. At number 6, Winston Marshall. I don't know if you could really consider being kicked out of a band as getting fired, but I think it's close enough. Mumford & Sons musician Winston Marshall was recently let go from the folk rock band and some say that his career is kind of over. The musician recently came under fire after he was called out on Twitter for praising the book Unmasked Inside Antifa's Radical Plan to Destroy Democracy. The book in question is said to quote, condemn the destructive rise of Antifa. The content resonated so deeply with Winston that he even tweeted the book's author where he called him a brave man for publishing this content. This message of support angered a lot of people and resulted in him facing mass scrutiny from many fans. After facing this backlash, Marshall tweeted a series of apologies to everyone he offended, saying that he understands that people, including many of his bandmates, have been hurt by his comments, and also saying, quote, For now, please know that I realize how my endorsements have the potential to be viewed as approval of hateful, divisive behavior. I apologize as this was not my intention. The guitarist faced a lot of backlash from fans online as they pointed out how his personal views can come across as highly offensive. Because of his cancellations by fans, the band reportedly held an emergency meeting where they discussed Winston's place in the group and in response to the band's actions of kicking him out, he said that he was going to use this time off to quote, examine his blind spots. There hasn't been any information saying whether or not he would be returning to the group and what this might mean for his career. At number 5, Piers Morgan. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's interview with Oprah was one of the biggest newsmakers of the year so far and it still has a lot of people talking and sharing criticisms. In the interview, a lot of deep personal insight was shared and many comments Meghan and Harry made were heavily discussed by news outlets. One of the things that was said by Meghan Markle that was picked apart the most were her comments on her mental health before she and Harry split from the royal family. Meghan said that there was a period of time where she was really depressed and had thoughts of taking her own life. Broadcaster Piers Morgan decided to pick this information apart and said that in his opinion he quote, 
didn't believe a word Megan said. As a result, peers and the network he worked for faced mass scrutiny for saying such a thing about someone's mental health, as it was seen as diminishing and offensive to dismiss the severity of such a thought as taking your own life. Because of the backlash he faced, Pierce was promptly cancelled online and later announced that he would no longer be working for the network. This was a crazy reason to lose his job, not because it's outrageous, but because this all could have been avoided had he not said what he said about another person's mental health. At number 4, Jesse Smollett. Here's a scandal that caused a lot of drama and ended in unemployment. Former Empire actor Jesse Smollett found himself in a lot of hot water for a while following the scandal and subsequent backlash he faced after he was caught making false police statements about an alleged hate crime. In January 2019, Jesse, who is an openly gay man, claimed to have been attacked by a group of people wearing masks who put a rope around his neck and shouted slurs at him. Jesse filed a statement with police recounting the event, however, after a police investigation ensued, they found that the claim was fake. It was later discovered that Jesse made the whole thing up because he was unhappy with his salary from Empire and figured that he could get more from an event like the one that he fabricated. The charges laid against him for making this false report were eventually dropped, but simple charges emerged last year, and Jesse was indicted. As a result of his scandal and legal issues, Jesse was promptly fired from Empire and has struggled to make things work for him in the industry since then. There was even a call to blacklist him from the entire industry. This just goes to show you that money can make people do just about anything, even make really bad choices. At number 3, Hartley Sawyer. This is yet another reminder that the internet is forever and sometimes your past can come back to haunt you and even get you fired. After some of his highly offensive tweets came to light in 2020, actor Hartley Sawyer was fired from his role as Ralph Dibney on the CW show The Flash. This all happened around the height of the Black Lives Matter movement and so in a show of accountability and respect to those he offended, the showrunners released a statement informing fans of the show of their decision to let Hartley go where they said, quote, in regards to Mr. Sawyer's posts on social media, we do not tolerate derogatory remarks that target any race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, or sexual orientation. Such remarks are anti-ethical to our values and policies, which strive and evolve to promote a safe, inclusive, and productive environment for our workplace." End quote. Since being fired, Harley hasn't been around on social media or anywhere in the news. After being exposed like this, I'm guessing he's trying to lay low while The Flash continues on without him or his character. At number 2, Lori Loughlin. Actress Lori Loughlin not only lost a lot of money in legal fees, but she also lost her job on the Netflix Full House reboot, Fuller House. This all came after she was indicted on charges of conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud after being caught in the college admissions scandal. After she and her husband Massimo pleaded guilty to the charges against them, they were sentenced to two and five months respectively, and though everything is said and done for them legally speaking, Lori is still out of a job and probably will be hard pressed to find much work. As a result of this whole scandal, Lori was fired from Fuller House and there have also been reports that she's been blacklisted from Hollywood. Whether those reports are actually true remains unknown, but the bottom line is her career is tarnished and so is her credibility. This all happened because the actress and her husband bribed their daughter into a good college and so many people have pointed out how their wrongful use of their privilege is really what led them here. And finally at number 1, Leah Michelle. TV and Broadway actress Leah Michelle was cancelled in 2020 after a bunch of people came forward to expose her for her awful on-set behavior. Reports and accusations came out last summer detailing how she's been known to disrespect people she's worked with in the industry. This all started at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, where one of Leah's Glee co-stars, Samantha Ware, called Leah out on how the actress made her time on the show a quote, living hell. This ultimately sparked a chain reaction of other people coming forward to talk about their horror stories of working with the actress, with some talking about how she would disrespect and talk down to background actors, how she would delay production, and how she would refuse to talk to anyone face to face and would force them to speak with her assistant instead. Because of all the negative attention Leah was getting, this ultimately led her to being fired by the brand HelloFresh, ending their partnership with the actress. They released a statement condemning the actress's actions, and since then, Leah has lost credibility and respect in Hollywood. Starting off this countdown in no particular order, we have Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's dad, Charles Harrelson, was an American hitman and organized crime figure. Yes, you heard me correctly. Beloved actor Woody Harrelson had a father who was a cold-blooded killer. He was just seven at the time when his father first went to prison. It's said that he was responsible for the deaths of at least 
20 people. In 1979, that is when Charles committed his biggest kill of all time. He took out a federal judge by the name of Judge John H. Wood Jr. He was the first federal judge to be killed in the 20th century. He was paid $250,000 to kill off this judge. It was because a drug dealer was about to be sentenced by this judge who was known as Maximum John because he always gave out really harsh punishments to drug dealers. So he got Charles to knock him off for him. But this landed him behind bars and in solitary confinement. He was there until he was 69 when he died from a heart attack. Obviously, Woody does not want to be defined by his father's actions. In our ninth spot, we have Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin is one of the few actors who actually grew up in a cult. He was born into the commune of Children of God. But when he was four years old, his parents managed to escape the cult and move. That's actually why they changed their last name to Phoenix, as it symbolizes rebirth, since they were able to leave this cult and start a new life. Unfortunately, he also lost his brother at a young age. In 1993, his brother River Phoenix died from an Dose. Joaquin witnessed this happen and he was the one that called 911. In our eighth spot today, we have Phil Lewis. Phil Lewis is best known for his role of Mr. Mosby on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And I freaking love that show. Like, it was honestly my childhood. Well, before his Disney Channel days, he actually killed someone. In December of 1991, Lewis fatally hit a 21 year old woman. She passed away from her injuries from the hit. It was found that Lewis was driving while intoxicated. His blood alcohol levels were three times the legal limit of intoxication. As a result, he was convicted of a DUI as well as manslaughter. He was sentenced to five years in prison, two years probation, and 350 hours of community service. But he managed to only serve one year in prison. I guess Disney was able to overlook his past when he auditioned for Mosby on the show. In our seventh spot today, we have Tim Allen. Now, if you look at Tim Allen, you think, oh, he's such a family man. I love Home Improvement and Toy Story. He's a great actor. Well, Tim Allen actually had quite a dark past before he got into acting. In 1978, Allen was arrested for attempting to traffic more than 650 grams of he was arrested in Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport. Now, he actually would have served a lifetime in prison, but he avoided this by giving police information about other dealers. As a result, his sentence was reduced to three to seven years. He ended up serving two years and four months in prison and then was granted parole in 1981. I guess that's why they say don't judge a book by its cover because he looks like a wholesome dad, not a drug trafficker. In our sixth spot, we have Jack Nicholson. In 1974, Time Magazine discovered that Jack's sister, June, was actually his mother, not his sister. How wild is that? So June was only 17 when she became pregnant with Jack and she wasn't married, so her parents agreed to raise the child as their own with Jane and Lorraine acting like his older sisters. So his parents were actually his grandparents and his sister Lorraine was his aunt. In regards to his dad, we don't know for sure who is his dad, but some say it was likely June's manager. Other sources claim June really just doesn't know who the father was. By the time Jack found this all out, his mom, June, and his grandma had already passed away. Imagine how that would have changed his life. Like he was raised on a lie. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Sean Penn. A number of women have come forward saying that Sean Penn has been aggressive towards them. In fact, he has mistreated a number of his partners, including Madonna. They were married from 1985 to 1989. While in December of 1988, Penn allegedly tied Madonna to a chair and held her hostage for nine hours and apparently hit her multiple times. When he untied her to let her use the bathroom, she fled to the police station. One officer said, and I quote, Madonna staggered into the station. She was distraught, crying with makeup smeared all over her face. I hardly recognized her. She had obviously been struck. Sean was charged with inflicting corporal injury and traumatic conditions on Madonna, as well as battery. But Madonna withdrew her complaint a week later and has rarely commented on it since, which is quite odd. Why would she say that he harmed her and then retract the statement? So who knows what really happened? Happened. Moving on to number four, we have Leighton Meester. Now, I personally did not know this, but Blair Waldorf, aka Leighton Meester, wasn't always the queen bee of Manhattan. In fact, she was born in prison. Basically, her mom was serving a sentence after smuggling a lot of marijuana 
out of Jamaica with the help of Layton's dad and Aunt Judy. All of them ended up behind bars. In fact, her aunt managed to escape prison and became America's first woman on the US Marshals 15 Most Wanted list. How insane is that? In the end, Layton's grandmother raised her while her mom served 16 months in prison. Thank gosh she didn't follow in her family's footsteps. In our third spot, we have Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken was involved in a death that is just shrouded in mystery. On November 29th, 1981, 43-year-old actress Natalie Wood was found dead floating face down in the Pacific Ocean. She was on a yacht with her husband Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken when this happened. The thing is, no one really knows what happened to her. Some say she slipped off the deck and fell into the water, while others are convinced that her husband or Christopher Walken had something to do with it, or that they know what happened. One theory is that Natalie and Christopher were having an affair, Wagner found out about it, got mad, and pushed her off the yacht. Now, Wagner seems to be the prime suspect, but many people think that Walken knows exactly what happened. I mean, he barely even talks about the case, and on the rare occasion that he did, he would call in an accident, and also, he was absent from the documentary about her. All I'm gonna say is someone knows something. I'm getting the vibe that Walken knows what happened and maybe he just feels guilty about it. In our second spot, we have Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron actually had a very traumatic upbringing. Her dad struggled with alcohol addiction and would constantly threaten Charlize and her mom, Gerda. He would never physically hurt her, but he would hurt Gerda. One night in June of 1991, he got angry and fired shots at both of them. During that altercation, Gerda ran and grabbed her own handgun that she had kept hidden and shot him back. Her shots killed him while Charlize watched it all unravel. In the end, it was declared self-defense and Gerda never faced any charges. But think how traumatizing that must have been for her to see her mother shoot and kill her dad as a teenager. And in our number one spot today, we have Ashton Kutcher. Now, I never knew this, and I was incredibly shocked when I found out about it. But on February 21st of 2001, Ashton Kutcher went over to his then girlfriend's house, Ashley Elrin. The two had planned on going to a post Grammy party, but when he knocked on the door, there was no answer. That's because Ashley was dead on the floor of her home. She had been stabbed 47 times by a man named the Hollywood Ripper. He was responsible for the death of up to 10 women. As a result, Ashton Kutcher lost his girlfriend very suddenly and in a very traumatic way. He was also scared that he was going to be a suspect in the murder investigation since his fingerprints were on her door, but he never was, but he did have to testify in court. First up on our list today is Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando is considered to be one of the most handsome Hollywood stars to grace the silver screen. He is also known for being an extremely talented actor who led a bit of a rough and tumble life. But what you may not know is that his ladies' man attitude resulted in various affairs and marriages, and well, eight kids, with the actor adopting three additional kids on top of that. And sadly, some of these children would have extremely unhappy lives. In 1990, one of Marlon Brando's sons, Christian, shot his sister Sheehan's boyfriend. Apparently, he had suspected that Sheehan's boyfriend was harming her physically, and so Christian ended up taking his life when the altercation escalated. He was charged with manslaughter and served six years in prison. Sadly, that wasn't the only horror that the Brando children would go through, as only five years later, Sheehan tragically ended up taking her own life after a diagnosis with schizophrenia and a steady mental decline. Next on the list is Liv Tyler. We all know her as the stunning half-elf woman in Lord of the Rings. She's also known as the daughter of Steven Tyler, the eccentric frontman of Aerosmith. However, that wasn't always the case. Liv Tyler was originally born as Liv Rundgren, and she believed that the famous musician and music producer Todd Rundgren was her father. However, a chance encounter as an eight-year-old with Steven Tyler started to unravel Liv's true parentage. During the meeting, Steven pointed out the eerie similarities between his own daughter and Liv, which led to her mother finally confessing the secret. Liv wasn't related to Todd at all, and in fact, her mother had kept the secret to protect her daughter because Stephen was going through some serious substance issues at the time of their brief relationship. Liv eventually changed her last name to Tyler, but kept Rundgren as her middle name in homage to the man who raised her as his own at some point. Damn, I wish I had two rock star dads. Next up is MMA legend Ronda Rousey. She's got a spectacular record, and it's impossible to penetrate her amazing fighting legacy as she has cemented herself as one of the greats. Her personal life, though, well, a little touchier. In fact, Ronda has a history of aggression in her past relationships, having violently harmed an ex boyfriend. She is also a conspiracy theorist who has some extremely harmful opinions. 
She shared on her Twitter that she believes that the horrifying Sandy Hook incident was actually a manufactured incident and that the people and children involved were actually actors. I can't think of anything more harmful and disgusting than promoting that the real life harm of was done to take away guns from Americans. Rhonda shared the video and described it as quote, extremely interesting and a must watch documentary. Eventually, after obvious backlash, Rhonda deleted the video and her manager attempted to scrub any trace of it from the internet, which obviously didn't happen because it is in fact the internet. Next up is Frank Sinatra. The smooth singing romantic who charmed his audiences into the hall of greats has a seriously dark secret personal life. In fact, every move Frank Sinatra made was meticulously tracked by the FBI for 40 years in pages and pages of files. Why, you may ask? Well, outside of being held in suspicion for dodging the draft because of a supposed ear infection, he is also thought to have strong mafia ties. He's been seen in cahoots with a revolving cast of characters connected to the criminal underworld, including Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana, with whom he was close friends. Apparently, the FBI was so closely tracking Sinatra because he had introduced Sam to John F. Kennedy's campaign for presidency in an attempt to deliver union votes. Dodging the draft and electing John F. Kennedy, Sinatra is a man after my own heart. Next up is the actor who portrayed Spider-Man in the original Spider-Man movies, you know, the ones with the PlayStation font. Well, Tobey Maguire has had an insane childhood that was largely hidden from the public when he became an A-lister. He came from a very financially strained family. His parents adopted several of his cousins after his aunt passed away suddenly, and the weight of now caring for all these kids left them destitute and broke. In a desperate attempt to provide for all these children, Toby's dad attempted to rob a bank. His attempt was unsuccessful, and his father had to spend some time in prison for his crime. Thankfully though, he was released after a few years because it was his first time offending, and the judge sympathized with his cause. Luckily for them, they made it out of the ordeal and now Toby is an internationally recognized celebrity. Next on the list is Kevin Spacey. And not for what you might think, because really nothing can keep what he did a secret and his attempts at hiding it are abysmal at best. But what you may not know is that there are more than a few skeletons in his closet and he's got one secret that I actually didn't know. Kevin's left-leaning political views are very well known, so it may come as a surprise that his father was vehemently racist and believed that white people were a superior race. Kevin refuses to talk about his father, but his siblings have opened up a handful of times about their traumatic childhood, often describing their father as an evil monster. Apparently, their father would also continually his kids while they were growing up, and it got so bad that Kevin's brother Randy almost took the life of his father while the young boy was hiding in a closet, but he never opened the door. Although Kevin is a reprehensible human being, no boy deserves to grow up in such a horrifying environment. Next up is a K-pop idol whose secret is definitely out of the bag at this point. We all know just how strict and borderline harmful the K-pop industry is towards its stars often restricting diets to near starvation in an attempt to get their already lean singers to lose weight alongside 12 to 20 hours a day of dance practice. But one K-pop idol from the band Bang Bang has some dark underground secrets that only recently came to light. Sian Gri was sentenced last year to three years in prison for the crime of running an underground nightclub that bet heavily on foreign casinos where gambling is illegal. He was also charged with providing women to business executives for, you know, services. Apparently he's been doing this for years and we only recently found out during a Korean military bust. Now it seems like sadly his K-pop days are over as he spends the next three years behind bars. Next up is Hollywood actor Casey Affleck. I'm surprised we haven't done this one yet, honestly. Known for movies like Manchester by the Sea and Gone Baby Gone, Affleck is a critic's best friend. But he's not everyone's best friend. In fact, Casey has been accused by multiple women of committing horrifying acts against them. Some say that he snuck into their bedrooms, other that when they refused his advances, he sent them violent and aggressive texts. Other women have said that he ordered a crew member to expose himself to this one woman. All of these allegations were attempted to be taken to court to be filed as multi-million dollar lawsuits, but they were both settled for unknown amounts. Thanks to these settlements, we may never know if these accusations are true or not, but it seems really odd that not many people are talking about it these days. 
In fact, when asked about it, Casey brushes it off as hearsay and his dark past seems to be fading into secrecy once again. Second to first on our list is Oprah Winfrey. The talk show host who revolutionized the game, Oprah's name is synonymous with the monolithic empire she's built surrounding her image. She's known for her lovable, relatable, and welcoming personality. But her humble beginnings make her rise to fame all the more deserved. In fact, Oprah was born in Mississippi to a single teenager mom, and she grew up in extreme poverty. During her childhood, the cost of raising a baby became too much for the young mother, so she sent Oprah to go live with her father, or at least one of the men who she thinks might have been her father. During her time with her dad, Oprah's mom gave birth to two more babies, one of which was given up for adoption. The real kicker here is that Oprah only found out about her sister Patricia in 2010. While a gut reaction to this news may be to cast harsh judgment on Oprah's mother, it is important to remember that it is impossible to know what it is like unless you have been in her position. For those who have been, we think you understand the brevity of her decision. Last up is Nicolas Cage. Now, I guess it's not exactly a dark secret here, and I may be cheating a little bit, but I only just found this out when I was writing this script, and wow, wild. Anyways, Nicolas Cage is known for his fun and sometimes extremely cheesy acting in movies like Face Off and Ghost Rider. But what you may not know is that Nicolas Cage isn't even his real name. In fact, Cage's birth name is Nicholas Kim Coppola, and his uncle is the famed director Francis Ford Coppola. The name change resulted from his wish not to cash in on the fame associated with the Coppola name in Hollywood, though the actor did end up appearing in several of Francis's films. It is quite believable when thinking about it for a few seconds, as both talents are just as eccentric as the other. The principal difference is that Francis Ford Coppola's odd ideals gave the world masterpieces like The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, while Cage gifts audiences with wild overacting and melodrama. 